Good day, everybody. My name is Amy with Fairy Godmother Craft, and today I have the second tutorial for how to do the Mariana Faith book. This one will be um, the cover and um, how I decorate, how I did the inside cover pieces. So let's get looking at that. Um, so here is the book. Let me bring it in here. Um, move some of these over. So we have this flap that opens up. On the inside cover, there is a pocket. Um, it's a pretty um, good sized pocket. And inside the pocket, along with some photo mats, um, I have this see-through um, envelope with some um, magnets to hold it together. And then on the back of the cover, um, I have these waterfall um, flaps for photos. So um, let me show you how I did those. Um, I'm going to move this over here to the side. Um, so here is um, what the cover looks like. Now I've, I've got the cover all um, put together, um, but these are um, the pieces of the chipboard that you will need in order to make this cover. You're going to need two pieces that are six and three fourths inch by eight and a half inch for the front and the back. You'll need one piece that is four and a half by eight and a quarter, and that's this um, front flat piece. Um, you'll need one piece that is one and a half by eight and a half, and you'll need another piece that is one and five eighths by eight and a half. So the one and a half is for the um, left side where your hinge is gonna go, and the one and five eighths is your outside um, wrap around um, piece. So um, I've got this one all put together. Um, I do use, um, um, what's it called? Um, Tyvek to um, do my hinges um, to keep them strong. Um, and then I also use um, double-sided tape and my art glitter glue um, to do this. My hinge here has got um, two, um, two fins on it. And I've gone ahead and I have covered the inside as well. Um, I did kind of a little bit of paper um, piecing here for this whole piece. Um, and that doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be covered up um, with your decorative paper when you're done. And then I have put um, a piece at the top half um, here because the, the pocket's gonna cover this bottom half. So let's work on how we're going to make the pocket for the front. Um, let me move that over to the side. So um, the pocket um, for the front piece is a piece that is eight by five and a half. On three sides, we're going to score at half inch and five eighths inch. And this is going to give us a little bit of a deeper pocket to um, put that envelope in and any other tags you might want to go um, into as well. At the bottom, you're going to cut out um, the corners. Um, I don't know if you can tell with that very well. Um, my lighting's not really terrific. I'm doing this at nighttime, so I don't have a whole lot of light. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut out the corners of the pocket so that nothing is in the way once I folded this all up. So there, you can see it. I got, I've cut that out. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all six of the score lines. And Mabel's back. I thought I had that problem solved, but apparently I don't. Okay. Go ahead and oh sweet lord. And it is a little bit tricky to get these parts scored um, just because it, it is just that 
um, eighth of an inch um, on there. Oh, Mabel, please. And there. So now you can see there is like just that tiny little bit of a, that eighth of an inch there. So in order to glue that, I do want to get rid of this cat that won't leave me alone. Um, I am going to glue these corners. And I have found that when I use my Tim Holtz roller, um, that, that gives me just the right amount um, to, to make that nice. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right there. I'm trying so hard to make sure this cat can't get in the picture. <laughs> oh, please tell me everybody else has these issues. So, I did it on that side. So I'm gonna do it again on this side. Again, my ruler is helping me keep that nice and square, and it's just the right depth for this pocket. So I'm gonna bring my book back in, and I'm going to open up to my front flap and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this um, down here. You do need to glue all four sides, um, or all three sides, I'm sorry, all three sides when you do this because um, you've glued those corners down. this on here and you just want to make sure that you are giving yourself enough room at the bottom and the sides but then you also want to make sure you clear that um, that close and again I'm going to bring in my Tim Holtz ruler um, just to make sure that I've got that all glued down really nice in there and here she comes again. Okay. So that looks good. That pocket's on there. Nice and good. And then for this inside, um, I'm also going to show you how I made um, the envelope. So to do the envelope, you will need two pieces. You'll need one piece that is seven and a half by five inches. Um, and then the window is cut out at one inch um, all the way around. And then you're gonna need a second piece that is eight and a half inches by eight and a half. And then I'm going to score um, at a half inch on three sides and um, two inches on the fourth side. Mabel, please. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to start off by mitering the corners at the bottom of the envelope. And then up at the top for the closing flap, I'm going to um, just cut out um, that top half. So I'm going to... here and here. Okay, so I've mitered my, my corners and then I've cut out um, that, that top piece um, on either side. Now, um, on the ones that I do, I do round um, the corners in the book I did now. If you want to do that, I do like rounding these ones. I'll show you how I go about doing that here in just a moment. Um, so I'm going to start off 
by um, folding and burnishing um, the three sides, the three half inch flaps. And then I'll come back and I'll fold and I'll burnish the, the two inch piece. So um, when I do that, let me pull my, my corner rounder out. Um, this is a, um, I think it's the Creative Memories um, corner rounder. And I just, I really like this one. Um, but the only way you could do is you do have to have this folded in order to get into that section. And then I'm going to go and do this side as well. Get that in there. And then that gives you nice little rounded tops. Um, sweet Lord. I love my caps. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so, um, and then if you were going to round the top, um, you would do that as well if you wanted to. All right, so there is the back half. Um, so now for the front, if you didn't um, want to make this a window one, um, you could just glue this on here and, and make um, an envelope. You can just glue that on there. And make the envelope this way um, and that would work out just fine but um, if you want to make the window then um, here's how I do it let me grab my ruler um, I usually use my ruler and um, I just measure the one inch all the way around and make that um, in order to cut it you um, you are going to um, need something sharp um, I am going to use, um, my, um, my knife blade here. Um, so I do use my ruler to make sure that, um, I've got a nice, um, uh, cutting edge to put my, um, my blade on. And I'm just going to cut on there. And turn it this way here. I'm left-handed and I don't know if there's many of you lefties out there, but I do find that um, sometimes um, not all products are made um, to help us lefties out. Um, not necessarily that this is one of them, but... Um, I do find that a lot of time my ruler numbers are upside down or um, you know, certainly like I, when I trim, when I use my trimmer, I have to use my trimmer upside down. Um, but by no means am I complaining because, well, it won't make me stop crafting. Let's see that I have missed just slightly. Trim. And then do this last one. Okay, so um, with that being done, I have now cut out my center. Um, I may need to fix it up a little bit. Um, so now I've cut that, that middle piece out and that will create my window. Now, um, of course, I didn't grab any of my um, my acetate sheet, but um, you're going to put um, a clear piece of acetate in there. Um, when I make my own, um, I tend to glue just this bottom piece on and not glue anything else until after I've matted it because we do want to mat the inside and we don't want to have to be fighting this so um, when I do this I will just glue this bottom piece for now on there get that center 
covered. And then I will leave it just like that um, until I have um, matted this inside piece. And then I'll go ahead and I will um, glue up the sides um, and make this. And now on um, the envelope that I have here, I did um, use two magnets. So I put a magnet here and a magnet here and then another one up here and up here so that when it closes, um, it stays closed. Um, and again, this isn't just left open. <laughs> um, I do put a, a clear piece of um, acetate in there to make that clear pocket. Okay, so that's how we make that pocket. Um, and that would go, let me see. And so then this would go inside this pocket um, along with other photo mats if you wanted to. Um, this is plenty to put in here. I just have more photo mats in the book that I made because there were so many cut aparts. Um, so now to do this back cover, I'm going to take this out just so that we can work with it. Um, and clear this up just a little bit. Um, you are going to need one piece that is um, uh, five by five and a quarter. And you're going to score it at half inch on the five and a quarter side. And then you're going to need seven pieces that are six and three quarters by five and a half. And you're going to score it at half inch on the five and a half inch side. So let's go ahead and start. Um, just move these to the side here. Um, da -da -da -da. And start um, folding and burnishing on all of the score lines. This is one of those things I think that is also not 100% left-handed friendly. I have to keep um, paying attention to which side I'm holding it on to make sure I'm scoring and not on the rounded side. Now I have seven um, of these flaps for my waterfall, four, six, seven, and then one piece for the closure. And I'm going to start with the waterfall. Now the waterfall um, is going to start at the top here. Um, and again, in order to see what I'm doing, I'm going to flip it upside down just so that I get um, a good visual of where my pieces are going to go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put glue on my little flap. And I'm going to center it on this back page. Let's stick it down. Burnish that down. So that's the top one and the one we're going to use to um, guide all the rest. And again, I'm working upside down so that it tends to be easier for me. I'll put glue again on the flap. going to butt it up to the bottom of the top flap 
But more importantly, I'm going to make sure that when I close my top flap, that the bottom one is centered on either side. Um, because you can fudge this line, but you can't really fudge this line um, without it, it looking bad. So you do want to make sure um, that you have um, this lined up well. Okay, get that glue to dry. The next one. Again, there are seven of these, so. up well with the one on top of it. this to make sure that they line up. that. Make sure that they line up. And two more to go. Again, I use art glitter glue. Um, you can use whichever glue you like the most. Um, or if you would rather do this with score tape, you can do that as well. Um, and just use whichever adhesives that you are the most comfortable with. I have all seven flaps done. I am going to come around and put the bottom piece here. Um, now this I do want to try and center. Um, so I am going to put my um, my ruler down. Um, let me see here. And then this piece is five, um, five inches wide. I'm gonna put my my glue on that bottom flap. Centered. 
keep having this in there. There we go. And then burnish that. And then for my waterfall, um, I am going to use magnets um, to keep it closed. Um, and for that, I'm going to use um, glue dots. And so what I like to do to make sure um, that I've got my magnets in, in place, I'm going to put just pencil lines around the edges where my flap meets. Um, because I know that I like to, um, when I mat, I like to have um, an eighth of an inch around as a mat. So I want to make sure that my magnets are well inside um, where um, the mats might be. So get my blue dots. So I'm going to start by putting a glue dot on one of the magnets. And I'm going to put it well within so that I know I can mat that piece without um, the magnets coming out or being in the way of any adhesive to glue the paper down. So I've got those on there. Then I'm going to go ahead and just put um, the second magnet on top. And I am going to stick the glue dot onto the magnet. It always works so much better when I don't have a camera on. But I think you guys completely understand how that can work. So now that I have that, then I'm just going to bring up my flap and press the magnets down and they should stick to that bottom half. And then I'm just going to use some double-sided tape to cover up the magnets and keep them in place until um, the decorative paper is um, placed. Okay, and then the only other thing that you really need to do for your cover um, is your hinge. Now my hinge, I make my hinges so that there is a, um, a half inch um, gusset between my hinges. That's how I, I almost always make them unless um, I'm making a book that has a lot more pages. The Nora Catherine book, um, the gussets were a little bit smaller just so I could fit six pages on, on the spine. Um, but for the most part, I always do a half inch gusset on mine. Um, so you're going to, the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put magnets on your flip um, in order to um, keep that closed. And I'm going to go ahead and do that the same way as I did um, with that back piece in that I am going to um, stick um, the magnets to one side and then close the book. So let's start with that. And again, um, you just want to make sure that you have um, enough space so that when you mat um, the front and the, um, the or the cover pieces that um, it's not going to get in, in the way of making sure that your um, paper can be covered. Then again, I'm going to go ahead and put 
the back half of the magnet on there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that a mess. Put this on here. And one more. And then when you close it up, you just want to make sure that you are um, clearing the cover and press down. And then you have your magnets on there. And again, I am going to use some tape to go over um, the magnets to keep them in place until paper has been um, put on top of them. There you go. You've got it closed. You've got your pocket, your flaps, and you've got your pages. Here they are. Um, your pages that are going to go in here. Um, and just depending on how you like to do it, um, some people like to. Um, glue it all together and then decorate it. Some people like to decorate it and then glue it together. Um, so however you do that, that's up to you. Um, so for this book that I did, um, for the Mariana book that I did, um, I used this Simple Stories um, Faith paper. And this paper collection had two of each sheet. And um, I only used um, one of each sheet. And in fact, I didn't use two of them. I didn't use this um, sheet and I didn't use this sheet. Um, but I used all the other sheets and, and a good portion of the cut aparts, but not all of them. Um, but because there was two of each in, in um, the thing, in this pad that I bought, I do have um, extra. So what I thought I would do is if you would like to make a book similar to the one here that I made for Mariana. Um, I will have the um, the paper, the extra paper that um, that came in my my paper um, and then the um, the blank book and I will put that um, on Etsy and you can um, purchase that and make um, your own book. Um, if not, um, you can follow the instructions to make your own book and use your own paper. Um, but I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. And um, I thank you so much for um, letting um, me share some of your day with you. Be good. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.